Down with the Chatham Journal. I'm with Claire and Martha. Claire's on the left, Martha's on the right. And they're from Celebrity Dairy. And the, the neat thing is we're here in Pittsburgh at the park. And we've got goats here. How many goats did you bring with you today? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve babies. Yeah, anywhere from four days old. She's the youngest that we brought. Four days old up to about two, two and a half Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's four day old. Four day old baby. little girl. Yep. We pull them from their mom on the fourth day. And so, but we, we socialize with them from the moment they're born. So they love people. They're happy to be out here sleeping on people's laps and chewing their hair. And <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your definition of socializing? I mean, that's, I mean, that can mean different things. To, I mean, you don't go out and have a beer at Doherty's or anything like that. I mean, I do, but they, the goats they don't, don't come with me. Yeah, they right? don't. Okay. <laughs> So you basically, you just interface with them? Yeah, from the moment they're born, we handle them and leave them with their mom for three days so that they can get the colostrum. And then on the morning of the fourth day, we take them and bottle feed them twice a day, just like a baby. And then uh, the moms become part of the milking herd. Okay, now do the moms kind of give you a dirty look when, when they see Claire come by and yeah. take one of the their- The new moms sort of fuss for a day or so, but the old moms are like, yes. And they just go right <laughs> You're out. like, get them out of my out life. Because we've been handling them since the moment they're born, it's not it's not strange that we're taking them. the babies um, are so used to us from the moment they're born. All right. It's it's sort of okay, and they get to go in with all their little friends. I mean, they live in pens, you know, like that, sort of all with each other, and they have a blast. So it's, you're like this is like kindergarten for kids or goats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what they call baby goats, don't they? Um, it's been a long day. Okay. Now, how many goats do you have at Celebrity Dairy? So we have, as of four days ago, 129 babies we've had since January 22nd. We have a milking herd. Right now we're milking about 65, all the moms that have had their babies, and we'll cap out at around 100 this year milking goats, twice a day, every day. Okay, so when you say milking herd, I mean, again, a lot of people are familiar with cows, but not everyone's familiar with m milking goats. I mean, they've heard of goat cheese and goat milk. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? So we milk the moms twice a day, every day, and all the milk um, goes right now to the babies. Some of the milk goes to the babies. We don't use replacer. We do feed our babies 100% mama's milk, and the rest of the milk goes in and becomes um, pasteurized milk that is then made into cheese, gelato, yogurt, fudge, soap, all the you products. Turn cheese, you turn the baby, I mean baby, you turn the goat milk into gelatos? We make gelato, yeah, we have about six different flavors of gelato, and we make around 30 different flavors of cheese, types of cheese, spreads, logs, aged cheeses, and we make two kinds of Scandinavian goat yogurt and fudge, about six different flavors of fudge and soap. Okay, what made you decide, hey, I want to get into the goat milking celebrity dairy business? <laughs> well, Celebrity Dairy's been open for around 40, 40 years. Right. And there's the inn at Celebrity Dairy where you can come and stay. We have seven rooms. It's on 340 acres. You can walk. Over the towards farms. Silk Hope. Yep. yep. Silk Hope. Right been there. there be, been, been there. Yep. yep. And so we manage the farm for the owners who are sort of retired now. So okay. I'm also a chef and have been for. 20 years and so we do the events and what's, what's the best thing you cook up um, everything i cook is the best <laughs> oh my goodness i i i, I, wa I walked into that yeah. one yeah. no i love it i'm from louisiana so food's in my soul you know and martha's one of our great volunteers she's a grad student at unc and she has been helping us out for months and unc i didn't think uh folks graduated from UNC that were interested in animals that was more like an NC State kind of thing yeah. <laughs> so how did you how did you get how did you recruit Martha well so we were at Pepperfest at the plant downtown. okay right we always have a booth at Pepperfest I have um, also a company called Circle City Supper Club where I teach classes at the at the dairy cooking classes we do kids summer camp there we do lots of um, dinners and events and lunch and tours where you can come and get a buffet of delicious food and then visit the baby goats and so Martha was at a booth um, for another group and came over and she's like, wait a minute, you have goats? And I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, can I volunteer? Sure. And that was, I don't know, six months ago or something. And she's been, she was with us all through kidding season, which is, anybody knows about, you know, living on a farm. Kidding season is <laughs> up, you're up all day, every day. It's goats 24 seven for a couple of weeks. All right. First. And Martha, what's, what's the name of that goat? This goat actually doesn't have a name yet. Not a name. No. She's when gonna, when do they have? When do they get a name? When we know that they're going to stay on the farm. So of the hundred, 
we'll, we'll cap out about a hundred and I would say 60 babies will be the, the, the top this year and right. we'll keep about 10 to 15 of those girls to become a part of the looking herd and sort of re replace some of the older girls that are going to be getting retired this year and so once we know for sure they're staying some of these babies we do know are staying already and they have some a name do they have to pass some kind of test or how do you decide who you're going to keep and who you're going to let go well attitude is a big big part of attitude it. Yeah. goats have attitude oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> what, what, what's what's the biggest attitude you run into martha oh my gosh okay i think the biggest attitude is probably from a goat named minnie okay and she's just extremely stubborn she does everything the way she wants to do it um, she's also huge, so it's impossible to make her do something she doesn't want to do. And um, this year she decided she wanted to have her kids outside in the field, and we could not move her. We could not get her to come inside, and she had triplets outside in the field. Ooh, okay. <laughs> now, you, you mentioned that she is huge. When you say huge, what does that mean in goat language? She's almost 200 pounds. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They so get have, that big? Yeah, well, alpine goats do. Alpine are one of the largest of the dairy breeds. All right. So can, they, can you, like, put a saddle on her and ride her? I mean, a child could easily ride her. We have okay. about four goats that are you know, between 185 and 200 pounds, and they're honorary and old, but um, but still sweet to us. But because yeah. we socialize them so early, they look at us as their herd leaders, and they don't challenge us in, in a physical way or in an aggressive way. Mm -hmm. They just sort of stand there and go, I really don't want to go into mm -hmm. oh, oh, I see. So they get that. That, that now do they get that attitude from you i mean i'm not gonna say no <laughs> so she was there before i was oh, so that's okay. impossible right no no it's mm -hmm. okay now look they had pony rides over at the ag fest at the ag center so with 200 pound goats you could theoretically speaking have goat rides but if they're honorary they're not going to want to be ridden they would just sort of stand there and look at you like i don't think so i don't think so <laughs> and yeah. goats can be trained to pull a cart um and some of our girls could easily be trained to pull a cart we haven't um done that in in a while i think they did that years ago they had a cart that some of the goats would pull sort of um, just as a fun little extra thing on the farm all right do you do that goat yoga thing we are actually going to have goat yoga once or twice. Are you uh, really? In April and May, yeah, we will. We have a, um, a girl who lives on the farm and grows microgreens. Okay. And so she's also a yoga instructor, and she's going to do a couple of different um, goat yoga events. Oh, and Martha, are you going to do that goat yoga thing? Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Heck Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you this question, both of you. What's put the biggest smile on your face about what you do at Celebrity Dairy? Oh gosh! Okay. And the, and you can't say everything. Um, I think probably my favorite thing has been kidding season this year. It's my first time being able to be on a farm and learning everything about goats, and it's really it's like super incredible to watch a mom like give birth and care for her baby, and watching them get up the first time and walk around. Yeah, I think that's just so awesome. It's really beautiful. <laughs> And do you have a favorite goat, or does that change depending on... Actually, yes. I do have a favorite goat. Um, she This year, she came and just laid down beside me and had her two beautiful babies. And right next to you? Right next to me. Ooh. Um, and she's really sweet. We call her Crosshorns. Um, but yeah, she's my favorite goat. <laughs> All right. And Claire, your fav what what's puts the biggest smile on your face about? And you might have more than one thing, but don't tell me everything at Celebrity Dairy. I get emotional when people ask me that question or, or anything about it. Because we're such a family there and we take care of each other and we take care of the inn and the people and the guests. And so... I think what's put a smile on my face mostly is just the interaction with the people that come to the farm and seeing people who not only can be there as a volunteer who wouldn't get to experience it otherwise, but you know, we have a seven room in there. So we have guests coming from all over this weekend. We had a couple from Pennsylvania that came down just to hold baby goats. And so seeing people get to experience that, it, you wouldn't normally get to experience it. Um, and just the smile on their face. And you know, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of work. And so we're sometimes like, Wow, this is a lot of work, but that makes every every second of the work worth it because they're just to them it's so special, you know. And right now we have a girl who um, is at the end. She's a BBC correspondent and she's visiting the area doing some work. And she just has sent me a text message like three different times going, "This place is so special. This place is so special. This place is so special." So for us, yeah, that's that's the, what puts the smile on my face. Just seeing how we come together as a team and just celebrating not only the animals but all the people who come and, and visit. Hey, what's up? 
Oh, we're, we're, we're talking about celebrity oh, dairy. Oh, she is also oh, one of our amazing volunteers. Oh, another amazing volunteer. Yes, Holy cow. You, you, you're, 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 round, you're rounding up people all over the county. We do. We have a huge group of volunteers this year. We have a, um, an intern from CCCC as well, Erin. She's been with us. We get one of those every semester from CCCC. They have that two-year sustainable ag program. And uh, that's been great. And there were days where we were just all down in the pit, just birthing goats and passing goats and marking goats and feeding goats and tagging goats and kept the coffee pot going. And now they're sort of calmed down and things are like trickling in. But let me ask you about that birthing kidding season. Uh, you mentioned you're in there helping. What do you help with? And what? I mean. You're kind of part of the process, but you kind of have to stay at the edge. Or, or, or I mean, you're, you're talking to a city kid. I, I mean, my mom won't let me bring a goat into the apartment, yeah. so. <laughs> well, um, we stay hands off until we until we need to intervene. Okay. For the most part, when you have five goats in labor, you sort of want to help. You know, they, they come out. You want to clean them off, clear their airway, make sure that's that's good. It, in January 22nd is when we had our first kid, and so it's cold. You want to help get them dried off. But we we had sometimes had four or five goats in labor at one mm -hmm. time, and so my kids would be over there helping those, and she would be over here, and somebody else would be over there. And we have another volunteer, uh, Lori, who's a beekeeper here in town, and she was down there helping. And we we're all just like tagging. And now you do want to make sure if a mom's in distress and she's pushing and pushing and pushing and nothing's coming out, then something's wrong. So I sort of have to go in there and you know feel around a little bit and it might be that it's a breech baby or a baby who's coming out butt first and he's blocked the blocked the road and nobody else is coming out and so we do have to sometimes go in there and maneuver and go okay and then things are, are fine you want to make sure that they latch on within the first 30 minutes it's very important for goats to get colostrum in the first 24 hours um, that's so that's the way they socialize or, or connect with their their yeah, mom. the moms will lick them clean and then our babies are up within five ten minutes standing up all wobbly and, really and looking for the teeth yep right yeah. away and they get that colostrum within the first hour that's important we do some things like the mom gets an energy drink of molasses and warm water the babies get their umbilical cord spray. Is she sleeping? Oh, yeah. She's yeah, asleep. she's asleep. Oh, she's sleeping. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. That's kind of like, yeah, she's really interested in our conversation. Yeah, we know it's a she first thing because, so when the babies are born, they get this tag here. Right. Um, within, we try to do it as soon as possible because otherwise we lose track of who's who. But it has her um, her number in the herd. She was our 129th baby born. Okay. And uh, her mom is B44. That's her mom's tag number. And she was born on 3 2024. And because it's yellow, we know at first glance that it's a girl. Gotcha. Uh, what is one thing or several things that most people don't know about goats? Or or what's the silliest question someone's ever, ever asked you about goats? We get a lot of questions. Um, the well, silliest question is, is, you know, the myth that they eat anything. Mm -hmm. They taste everything, but they don't eat everything. And we're glad about that because, um, you know, they are ruminants. They have poor stomachs. They chew a cud like a cow and eating the wrong things can really mess up that whole elaborate system in there. Um, that is the, the funniest question is, you know, about what they eat. Mm -hmm. and, um, a lot of the myths about goats are true. They are little escape artists, but that's only usually because they're bored or they're hungry. You know, they don't eat grass. They're not lawnmowers. They're weed whackers. Sheep are lawnmowers. Goats are weed whackers. When you say weed whacker, yeah, what exactly do you mean? Wheat, shrubs, brush, um, Vines, kutsu, poison ivy, blackberries, all the brambles in the bottom of your woods, all the new growth up to as high as they can reach. And they'll eat just the tops of high grass, but they won't eat to the ground because they're smarter than sheep. They know that they know that parasites. Goats are smarter than sheep. Yes. All right. They know that the parasites live in the ground, so they don't eat below their knees. Oh, so they're little scientists. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now you brought out all these goats out here. Are, um, I guess because we've been talking here for a while, you don't worry too much about the goats handling themselves, do you? Well, because, yeah, also I know we have eyes on them. Like, um, Lena is one of our um, employees. She's a teenager. Um, works okay. with us feeding babies. And we've got Cole around here. I'm not sure where he went, but he's my partner in, in goats and in life. And we live on the farm and manage together the, the events and the goats and, and everything. So, yeah. they um, These babies are at the age where they're, they're not going to challenge that fence too much. You know, if we had brought out the, the, the two ones. or three month olds, they'd mm -hmm. be climbing that thing in no yeah. time. Uh, do human kids naturally interact with goat kids and vice versa? Oh, yeah, they love them. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. their eyes just light up. We had a little boy the other day. He kept saying, this is the best day of my life. This is the best day of my life. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, 
hysterical. So that's one of the things that makes you really smile is that yeah, experience really that you see when, when people interact with your goats. Yeah, we'll have guests at the end walk out to the barn. When you're a guest at the end, you have free reign of the barn. You can go out and visit goats anytime. I've come out at 9, 10 o'clock at night to check on something and find them in there. Is it okay? Is it okay? I just, is it okay? And I'm like, yes, it's okay. And they'll be out there holding the baby 10 o'clock at night. Do you ever find them the next morning asleep? No, um, I haven't yet, but I'm sure that's probably happened in the past. I do know that there have been people who asked if they could sleep in the barn with the goats. So you got to charge extra for that. I'm gonna have to charge extra for that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you've you've got the inn where you've got the seven rooms, and you also serve up meals. Uh, we've talked pretty much about the animals, but let's talk about that part of the business. Um, if I were to come over and want to have that kind of experience, what's part of that experience for signing up? Do I sign up for a room, a weekend, a meal? I, I know you have some special um, occasions going on. I see you post on, on Facebook, and I usually try to repost those yeah. on Facebook. So we we are open Wednesday through Sunday for rooms. We don't do rooms on Monday or Tuesday nights. A Wednesday through Sunday. Um, weekdays, you get sort of a little goat cheese continental breakfast that's left there for you. Full breakfast on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Full sit-down breakfast with all the other guests. Uh, we do lunch and tour packages where you can come as a group, minimum of 15, and do all different sorts of options for buffet lunch, including a tour of the babies. We do homeschool groups during the week. A lot of retirement groups will come in. We can cater any private, we are a full rest licensed restaurant there at the end, so we can cater, we can have any group in for a private party, birthdays, um, we're doing her college graduation and her whole family's booking the inn for the whole entire weekend and we're doing a nice dinner for that. Um, How many students have a college night. graduation at a, at a goat farm? <laughs> right. Holy moly. That's special. You're going to remember that for the rest of your life. Yep. And anytime you're a guest, you can just come out to the barn, help us with baby feeding, watch the milking, uh, hang out, ask all the questions that you want. And of course, you get a little goat cheese. Um, while you're there but yeah any sort of private event I teach cooking classes there and we do a, the third Sunday dinner which they've been doing for years as long as the end's been open every third Sunday 1 30 it's a five course meal with, with the tour of the goats at the end and um, as Circle City Supper Club I do that's how I ended up at the end I would rent the end space to do my dinners and events and that was three years ago and then it just that's it. Now I live there and run the, run the barn. And so you started from food service and you moved into... Uh, yeah, I didn't know a thing about goats. You know? okay. I just started there and loved the goats and fell in love with Britt and Fleming who own, own it and started it years ago. And we jived and they were sort of like, we we're ready to kind of start handing this over, you know. That's how I ended up there. Now Martha mentioned she has a favorite goat. Do you have a favorite goat? I have favorite goats. I have a, a favorite... Um, young yearling who was our first baby that we sort of became our baby I had to take her home with me last year she's a yearling now and two of her babies are actually here with us today named little bit she's my favorite goat and then I have Viola who is the biggest goat she's 200 pounds just hysterical big and uh, she's just abroad you know if a goat could be abroad that would be Viola so. and her baby um, no her baby's not here today but it's funny she has a V on the back of her her hair, you know, makes into a V shape, and her little girl was born with the same V. So we're going to keep her and name her Valkyrie because that's the V. Oh, that's neat. You know, they're all named after celebrities. That's why it's celebrity there. So, so and there. so now we've sort of branched off into like movie characters and book characters, but um, has to be yeah, somebody famous and something. So who decides what you're going to name the ghost? Because this this little one over here doesn't have a name. But if you decide to keep her, uh -huh. how do you decide what name she's going to have? Who? I mean, do you draw or do you? We just get together and sort of look at their little personalities that are developing and look and see if they have any cool markings. We have one goat named Jophiel, which is one of the female archangels because she has white on her butt that's the shape of big angel wings. Mm -hmm. So you get a little creative when you've had to name 30 goats, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, true. let's look, what do we have? Yeah, and let's like, look, let's look at what, what, let's uh -huh. take a look at her butt and see uh -huh. if it looks like uh -huh. an like, angel. Were there any female angels? And we Googled it and Jophiel was a female archangel. So. <laughs> well, I, I bet a lot of people didn't know, know that and they learn something new every yeah. uh, every day. Sometimes we pick, a, uh, when we're tagging them, we pick a tag number out and it's a random number so we have one named Martha Washington because her tag number was 76 so 1776 there you go she's not absolutely uh, we'll get close to wrapping this up food service is not an easy industry no. I, I did that in college and high school and you got to love it to a certain extent but how did you get involved with food service you mentioned you got involved with goats because awesome 
you, you did a bunch of stuff at Celebrity Dairy, and it's kind of like, hey, it just snapped and ticked. How'd you get involved with the food service? Okay, so early, uh, um, let me see. 30 years ago, I was a wife at Fort Bragg and taking college classes at Fayetteville Tech. Took a theater class and ended up downtown at the Fayetteville, Cape Fear Regional Theater. As a stage manager, fell into that position and started catering all the events at the theater and cast parties, pop-up dinners, and loved that and thought I was turning 30 and um, leaving um, Fayetteville and thought... I think I'll go to culinary school. So I left, went to culinary school in San Francisco, and that was 20 years ago, and then moved home to Louisiana, opened a restaurant for five years, and then had my first son, who was here a minute ago, but he's taken off downtown somewhere, and uh, sold the restaurant and just been doing everything else since then, catering, teaching. I really fell into teaching about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and loved that part of it. Love seeing people kind of connect with food in that way, and it's a skill that is not really getting passed on like it should so uh, and I, look you gave me a cop-out answer when i asked you what your favorite food was you right. kind of you, you said hey everything and, and yeah that 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 is a good answer but there must have been something whether it was a challenge or something a little bit extra was there ever a meal that you kind of put together and gosh that just there was magic i think that happened when i went to culinary school because before that i mean i was from louisiana i grew up all my family are still there everybody cooks and eats there so i, I knew cooking i knew food i knew how to make a meal for my military husband you know i was 19 years old with a military husband who came home from work every day hungry so i was taking ramen noodles and chicken and putting it in together so into something and then but when i went to culinary school and it's sort of all like i could put the home cooking and the comfort side of food with the technique and the history, you know, the French side of things. And being in San Francisco, I was able to go down to Chinatown. You know, when we had Asian cooking class in, in school, we left our building and walked to Chinatown, bought the ingredients, came back to school and cooked them. And then I was sort of able to tie that comfort food, that Southern Cajun comfort food with the global influence that I got in culinary school. And then it's sort of still how I cook today. Anything else folks in Chatham County need to know about Celebrity Celebrity Dairy website or Um yeah the website is in much uh, is in need of it's an old website and look I can do a lot of things but Do you we, want people to call redo, you then? We redo a website. Follow us on the N at Celebrity Dairy Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Um, and that's the best way I can post immediately no matter how busy we are, we can just tag post right then. Um, and email the N at celebritydairy.com. So yeah, following saw, us on Facebook and emailing the N at celebritydairy.com is the best way to get in contact with us about any um, private event or anything that's coming up. And that's the, the most up to date information. The N, the website right now is really just the best place to book a room. But as far as event information, that's sort of like, but if you know, if we know any web designers who need a, a fun project and we're willing to trade for goat cheese, come on, <laughs> come on our way. <laughs> right. Martha, you got anything to say? No, I think we covered all of it. Look, she's, she's like bonding right there with the little goat, and she's all set. Yes. All right, folks, Dairy Celebrity, you've got information on how this whole operation works. They are down here. I actually came back because I was heading out of town, and I managed to stop somewhere. I'm like, holy cow, you got baby ghosts in Pittsburgh. How often does that happen? Yeah. And I'm like, I need to stop by and talk to you folks because there's lots of stories here in Chatham County, and I think this is one of the great stories here. So, hey, enjoy your graduation. Mm -hmm. I think Thank it's you. something... Everyone who's going to come to it is going to enjoy, experience, and remember. And thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, thank you.